The Ministry of Education and Sports issued a school education calendar that increased school learning time from 12 to 14 per term to enable learners complete their syllabus following earlier COVID-19 lockdowns. This was done alongside rolling out an abridged curriculum that condensed what was to be taught to the learners within two years and a half to help recover the time lost. However, around the end of year 2022, the Ministry of Education released a new school calendar that returned the school term back to the normal standard of 12 weeks. The National Curriculum Development Center confirmed that this will not interfere with their abridged curriculum implementation. However, urge teachers to ensure that the work is taught as it was packaged in the curriculum. Who was in, C, in P3, let's say, in P3 in 2020, they would be in P5 in 2022 when we resumed. That means this learner would have lost 2020 P3 work, 2021 P4 work. And so when they come to, P, to P5, because we did automatic promotion, when they come to P5 in 2022, that learner is expected to study work of P3, which they didn't study in 2020, and the work of P4, which they didn't study in 2021. Government, through Ministry of Education and Sports and National Curriculum Development Centre, started implementing the new lower secondary curriculum that is competency-based at the beginning of 2020. However, its proper rollout was affected by the COVID-19 pandemic. The full implementation of the curriculum has been done in 2022. The first batch of the new curriculum are joining Senior 3 in 2023, and according to NCDC, there is positive response in schools teaching the curriculum. However, there are some teachers who still have a challenge of interpreting the curriculum since training has covered about 30,000 out of a target of 55,000 teachers because of limited resources. That at least quite a good number of schools have taken it up. If you, uh, you, you have uh, attended competitions in science fair, at least quite a good number of schools have presented uh, students, mostly in senior one and senior two, where there is this uh, curriculum, which is competency based. These teachers to understand and get away from their old way of teaching takes a lot of time. It cannot be a one off. They need to continuously be developed, what we call continuous professional development. And the ministry under Ted is responsible for this. And we are hoping that when we have finished the initial exposure, which we are almost winding up, then the ministry under Ted, teacher education, will have to come up, the teacher education department, to continuously develop these teachers, such that for about five to ten years, they are well grounded on how to teach a competence-based curriculum. At a, we want to see them at that point when it is part and parcel of their lifestyle. Because right now, they, they keep going back to the old way of teaching. Under this initial training, the teachers are exposed to knowledge and understanding of competency-based learning, learning interactively, the formative school-based assessment. They also train on how to integrate the generic skills in the teaching and learning process plus assessment. And also to train the teachers on how to assess those generic skills. First, how to teach them by integrating them in the lesson, but also how to assess those generic skills. Also introduced what we called the activity of integration, from which the scores for the classroom-based assessment or the school-based assessment are derived. And so we also needed to train our teachers on how to assess using the criterion referenced approach. So introduced the projects as a mandatory activity for all learners. And the teachers needed to understand how to guide learners in undertaking the projects. They also needed to understand how to assess these projects. The lower secondary curriculum is giving learners the opportunity to think outside the box, be innovative, and creative, unlike the previous one that was theoretical. It's on their own to come up with new ideas, but also to contribute to the body of knowledge as, as learners. They explore, they research, they read a lot, and it has developed them. In, 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 their intellect now is higher.
than it used to be because now they think by themselves and they do by themselves. It is hands-on, but it's also collaborative. They interact with each other, share knowledge, come up with knowledge which they later share with the others. So the students like it, like the new curriculum, and they say that it's more practical. They don't get tired and bored. You, you, you have seen they have made uh, a, 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 a solar panel which helps to change uh, uh, sunlight into, into heat energy that they, they are using for cooking in, 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 in Lao College. We have some innovations there in uh, St. Gracias, in DOC. So this is a sign which shows that uh, at least the, the curriculum has helped to change the mindset of the students. Parents have, however, not fully embraced support to their children through providing inputs in the learning process for this curriculum, yet class assessment and the projects with its design account for 20% of the end of cycle examinations. Also by giving sometimes guidance to these learners, because we are looking at a holistic curriculum. It's no longer knowledge all alone. We are looking at the cognitive domain, we are looking at the psychomotor domain, and then we are looking at the affective domain, the values, the morals. So we expect the role of the parent to be significant. But some parents seem not to have understood their role. Maybe they know, but maybe they don't understand that their role in this process is very critical. The biggest challenge we have with the new curriculum is that it is very expensive. And it needs school where there's a lot of land. So in most of this urban setting, you, you will agree with me that uh, we have very challenges in terms of land. We have challenges even at the moment in terms of uh, funds. You know, the cost of items in the market have gone up because of inflation. National Curriculum Development Center to further improve implementation of the lower secondary school curriculum is to do monitoring through supporting teachers in school environment and is finalizing assessment modalities with Uganda National Examinations Board for the first cohort to sit their end of cycle examinations. The first cohort of this new lower secondary school curriculum will be in Senior 5 by the year 2025. This year ending 2022, National Curriculum Development Center carried out a study and discovered the advanced level curriculum has gaps which calls for a review to have a new one rolled out in 2025. When you look at the advanced level, the design is different from the O-level curriculum, but also there were gaps that were established which we think we need to cover, to take care of. And so we are thinking that once we are given a go-ahead, we shall be able to embark on that. We are hoping that by the time our learners graduate, at senior four in 2024, by 2025, if we are cleared, we should be good to go. I'm Navka Farida, reporting in Kampala.